Hello and welcome back. Uh, here we're going to do another hypothesis test. I don't know, are you getting as tired of these as I am? So many hypothesis tests today. Uh, this time we're going to look at a single population proportion. Uh, so these tests are done, uh, you'll see a lot of similarities between this test and the other tests that we've done. Uh, we're going to be using the z-distribution. There's one criteria that has to be met in order to use the z-distribution. This is, um, you may remember from, I think it was module 5, maybe 6, uh, we looked at the normal approximation of the binomial distribution. Uh, and so that's what we're going to be basing these, these calculations on. And in order for that to work, this criteria uh, needs to be met. Uh, our sample size times our, our proportion uh, has to be greater than or equal to 5. Uh, and our sample size times 1 minus the proportion must also be greater than or equal to 5. So we need to have sufficiently large sample size uh, in order for the normal approximation uh, to work. So in our case, we will always be working with sufficiently large samples. Uh, so we won't have to worry about this at all. Uh, otherwise, it will be a Z statistic like any other Z statistic. The only difference is going to be how the standard error is calculated. Uh, and you'll see that when we get to it. So let's just jump in here and get this problem done. So election years always bring us reports full of statistics on who's winning in the latest polls. One recent pollster argued that the Republican candidate has the support from more than half of the registered voters. After digging a little deeper into the article, you find details on the pollster's findings. In the footnote, you find that uh, you find the following information: out of a sample of 200 registered voters, 110 stated that they supported the Republican candidate. So, part A: on what information is this pollster's statement based? Is it fair and accurate? Well, all of this pollster is looking at is the sample proportion. If we look at the sample proportion we're looking at uh, 110 out of 200, uh, 200 voters. So this is giving us a sample proportion of 110 out of 200. So 55, we could say 55%, but I always like to keep things in decimals. Uh, avoids mistakes uh, later on. And actually, I'll show you where a common mistake is that I've seen, uh, I've seen my students make. So we, we, our sample proportion says 55% of the sample support uh, the Republican candidate. Uh, is it fair to extrapolate that to the larger population? Well, no, that's the whole reason behind hypothesis testing is because there's random variation in these samples. So what we should do, what we need to do, uh, is develop a hypothesis test to see if this is statistically significant, um, statistically greater than uh, half or 0.5. So, here we'll put together our, our null and our alternative hypotheses. Now we're working with proportions, not means. So the notation has to reflect that. So we'll use the capital letter P for the population proportion, not mu, because mu means population mean. And we're testing this against the value of 0.5. Now, nowhere in, the, in this problem do you actually see the hypothesized value of 0.5, but it does say here, more than half. So that's where I'm getting the 50% from. Uh, do we have evidence to show that that Republican candidate, the proportion of voters is greater than 50% or not? So do we have evidence to support this pollster's claim? So here we have our sample proportion. Here we have uh, our sample size was uh, 200. And we'll do this uh, yeah, we'll do this at the alpha 05 level of significance. Uh, so we've got uh, no, we can say no, this is not fair and accurate. We've formulated the test, that's done. So now let's get into part C, calculator test statistics. So the way that this formula is generally written in textbooks, it, it's often split apart. You'll often see it written uh, that sample proportion minus the hypothesized proportion divided by the standard error. And then you'll see a second formula for the standard error, and it's the square root of uh, this. So you don't need to have it split apart. I'm not sure why. We could just calculate this uh, in one formula as well. It's always the point estimate minus the hypothesized value divided by the standard error. That's the same as it's been for every test that we've done. 
but whatever, it doesn't matter. We calculate it however however we see fit. Now, one thing that I do want to point out here uh, is that it's really important to notice that in that calculation of the standard error, it's the hypothesized value. Uh, the mistake that I've seen students make here is using this standard error, p bar minus 1 minus p bar over n, because that's, an, that's a fair calculation as well. But this is what we would use uh, for confidence intervals. Because when we're producing a confidence interval, there is no hypothesized value. We're not doing a test, so there's no hypothesized value there. So we're just working with sample data in that case, and so that's uh, reflected in our calculations. So for this, we are doing a test. We do have a hypothesized value, so that's what we're going to use. So let's uh, let me just clear some of this up, and we'll do this in the steps that uh, that follow along what most textbooks generally show. So let me get uh, get some ink. And here we go. So our sample proportion is 0.55 minus 0.50 divided by that standard error. So let's calculate that. Here is where it's very important that uh, you use decimals. Because if I put in here uh, 50 times 1 minus 50, uh, we are going to get a very difficult uh, value to have to deal with and it can cause some confusion. So make sure in these calculations you're using 0.5 and 1 minus point, oops, 0.5. And let's, uh, let's calculate that bit. So this is 0.5, move this over a bit. 0.5 times 1 minus 0.5, well that's just 0.5 again, divided by 200 equals and square root that. So that gives me a standard error of 0 0.03536. 03536. So now we can find that uh, test statistic 0.55 minus 0.5 divided by 0 0.03536. And that gives me a value of 1.41. So there's my Z value, 1.41. That's our test statistic, our answer for part C. Now, what's our, what's our final result? What's our final conclusion? So let's find a P value here for 141. We go to our Z tables. Uh, this is an upper tail test. This is an upper tail test, so I want the upper tail probability. So when I go to the Z table, that's only giving us the lower tail. So I'm going to cheat, as we've done in other exercises. And I'm going to, uh, oh, I'm going to use our negative value. So I want negative uh, 140, oh, excuse my sniffing, I have a itchy nose. 141, that gives me a value of 0 0.0793. So that's in the lower tail for negative 1.41. So that would be exactly the same as what's in the upper tail for positive 141. So that works. That gives us exactly what we want. So here I have a p value. Oops. P value is equal to 0 0.0793. Okay, so what's our conclusion? Well, again, we could reject, but doing so exposes us to a type 1 error uh, at a higher probability than what I'm comfortable with. So because that p-value is less than alpha, I'm going to reject our null hypothesis. What am I saying? Holy smokes. It's greater than alpha. So it's too high. I'm not going to reject. If I were to reject, um, it would be exposing me to a type 1 error at a higher probability than what I'm comfortable with. So because it is too high, I'm not comfortable with that level of exposure to a type 1 error, uh, I am not 
going to reject. So this corresponds with a do not reject. So my statistical evidence says no, you silly pollster. We cannot say that the Republican has at least uh, half or has more than. He said he had more than half. We cannot say he has more than half uh, of the support. Uh, so that's, that's the more accurate statistical finding uh, as far as the accuracy of that statement goes. Our evidence does not support uh, that claim. Okay, good. So I think that's it. We've got our, our conclusion. Uh, we do not reject the null hypotheses. Uh, I am unable to say that they have uh, more than 50% of the uh, registered voters' support. Okay, good. I hope that that all uh, made, th made sense. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.